You must have seen in the movies, or at least heard about the many wars that took place between Ireland and Britain throughout history. Have you ever wondered why these wars ever took place? Did you know that Ireland was actually a part of the United Kingdom up until a century ago? Do you know anything about the Irish War of Independence and its leaders? In this video, we are going to talk about Eamon de Valera, a man surrounded with controversies who played an important role in the Republic of Ireland's journey towards independence. The United Kingdom, and its western neighbor, Ireland, have had a chaotic relationship since a long time ago. The United Kingdom, was a Protestant empire, while Ireland was mostly Catholic. The English didn't like this fact, and proceeded to wage war on Ireland several times over the course of centuries. Of course, religion wasn't the primary reason for these wars, but rather, it was one of the many. The Irish were brutally killed and enslaved in most of these wars, and faced countless discriminations. In the beginning of 19th century, Kingdom of Ireland became a part of the UK and was annexed to Great Britain under the Act of Union. This meant that Ireland was now part of the United Kingdom and would be ruled by the monarch. Perhaps this meant that the British would stop harassing the Irish, but that didn't seem to be the case. Even after becoming a part of the United Kingdom, the mistreatments did not stop. During the Great Famine that took place in Ireland in 19th century, almost one-eighth of Ireland's population died due to lack of food, while millions of pounds of food were being exported to Britain. This created an outrage among the Irish people and forced the Brits to think of a way to keep the situation under control. In order to appease the masses, the United Kingdom proposed giving Ireland home rule, which simply meant that they could make their own rules, provided that they remained a part of Britain. Around this time, a man named Eamon de Valera was born to an Irish mother and a Cuban father in New York. A few years later, his family moved back to Ireland and Eamon found himself fascinated by the Irish culture and language. Fueled on by nationalistic feelings, he joined a revolutionary organization named the Irish Republican Brotherhood where he would meet Michael Collins, another important figure in Ireland's independence. It was around this time that the First World War broke out and the Home Rule movement was suspended for the duration of the war. While UK was involved in a war, the Irish Republican Brotherhood realized that this was the perfect time to stage a rebellion. This rebellion was named the Easter Rising and de Valera was one of its leaders. Ultimately, the rebellion failed and many of the rebels, including de Valera, were captured. Almost all of them were executed, except for de Valera, who was an American citizen and the British couldn't execute him without facing consequences. At first, the Irish people were confused and angry since the rebellion had left Dublin in a devastated state and took a lot of people's lives, however, after the executions, they began to show support for the rebels. A year later, de Valera was released from prison and returned back to Ireland to join the political party named Sinn Féin where he reunited with Michael Collins. Sinn Féin won the election, but instead of taking their seats in Westminster, they set up an Irish parliament in Dublin named Doyle. Soon after this event, de Valera was arrested again, but Collins helped him escape the prison. The British announced that the Doyle was illegal, and sparked the Irish War of Independence. The war lasted for two years from 1919 to 1921 until the British suddenly offered a truce. A conference was supposed to be held between the two nations, but the king was not going to show up, and neither would de Valera. Instead, he sent a team of delegates, including Collins, to participate in the conference. The negotiations resulted in the Anglo-Irish Treaty, which stated that Ireland would be a free state with a considerable degree of independence, provided that the members of Parliament swore allegiance to the British monarch, and it also confirmed the partition of Ireland between North and South. The partition of Ireland meant that Northern Ireland, which was mostly Protestant, identified with the UK and wished to remain a part of it. However, the southern part, which was mainly Catholic, 
wanted to have their own set of rules and become the Republic of Ireland. Collins signed this truce while saying that he had signed his own death warrant. He knew that the issue of partition wouldn't be popular in Ireland, and he was right. De Valera was furious with the treaty. Some claim that the reason he didn't show up to the conference was because he knew the treaty would result in an Irish dominion, rather than an Irish republic, but didn't want to be blamed for giving up the idea of a republic, so he sacrificed Collins instead. The disagreements resulted in a civil war between the pro-treaty and anti-treaty parties. Ironically, this war took more lives than the War of Independence. The war ended in victory for the pro-treaty side, but Collins was killed and de Valera was arrested again. After his release from prison, de Valera returned to politics and formed the Fianna Foyle party. By 1932, he managed to remove the oath of allegiance and sought to establish an independent Ireland. He created the Irish constitution and republic, but a unified Ireland was never formed due to the partition. De Valera remained in power for several years, and served as the Taoiseach, the Irish word for Prime Minister, and later as President. He retired from office in 1973 and died in 1975 at the age of 92. For some, De Valera is regarded as the great hero of Ireland who brought forth the independence of Ireland from UK, but some believe he was just a crafty politician who removed his potential rivals and usurped power for himself. However, no one can deny the importance he had in Ireland's long journey towards the path of independence, despite the many sacrifices they had to make.